Okay, welcome back everybody to Tanya for Life. We're doing chapter 10, all about tzaddikim, learning about the tzaddik. And um, we just came back from Chag HaPesach, the, one of the Shalash Regalim. Um, so amazing. I've been in Jerusalem, so I'm seeing hordes of Jews, hordes of people coming to see the Kotel, so that's amazing. It's one of the three festivals where um, it's a mitzvah, medaraita, to come in and to, to come to the, um, see the Kotel, to come to the old city, um, to the Mesa Mikdash. So really amazing. <laughs> uh, another thing I wanted to say is that we've started already counting the Omer, the Spirit of Omer, um, and we've talked a lot about it, a bit about it. Um, and I just wanted to let you know, <laughs> any time in this 50 day period until Shavuot, 49 day period until Shavuot, um, this is all time of like, really working on ourselves. Um, for some people, it's the beginning of the year. Pesach is the beginning of the year. So, um, and, and, you know, what's different to other cultures is how at the beginning of the year, it's all about New Year resolutions. And, you know, I'm going to try, 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 try. And um, I'm not going to smoke another, you know, cigarette. I'm not going to overeat or I'm not going to lose my temper. I'm going to be patient or I'm going to work on myself. And these are what I want to do. And then they don't keep it up. So at the beginning of our, you know, experience of our year, um, this is what we're doing. We're in a time of like what's called dinim. Dinim is like rigorousness like you know we're like thoroughly working to wash ourselves thoroughly working to work on ourselves um rigorously not like not like you know not like if it happens great i had the cabana i had the thought it's not enough we have to really go into ourselves into our life we have to really put that work in um and and like hashem said i think the gemara says that when we put in the effort to come closer to hashem we put in the effort to to um, get to a holier level, Hashem comes down and helps us. So it's we're not doing it on our own. We're not changing ourselves at all. We've learned this through Tanya, and we don't we don't do it. It's Hashem who comes down through our own work, um, and and that's what we're doing. So each, you know, so each week is going to be difficult. You know, every day some people are more related to different days of the week. Um, you know, based on when you were born, based on and you know your name all these different things so there's like a, an extra connection you have with the spiritual power of the day and that will make it you know more difficult for you like you'll find for yourself um days where you just can't control you have no idea what's happening why am i just you know falling apart um and and it especially in the spirit of Omer, it really is connected to this part of your soul, this part of you, um, that you're really related with this, you know, you're rooted with this um, time. And it's a great opportunity for you to work on it. Um, so the Spirit of Amr is so important. Miriam has lots of videos on it. Um, there's also many Shirim you can find. But I just wanted to let you all know, it's kind of like the disclaimer I had for Hanukkah, that if you know, if it's been hard, it's because there's, there's like, you know, it's a reason. It's for you to, to get higher um, and to make the preparations because now you know that this is somewhere where you fall. So now you want to put more effort into it. Do teshuva. This period is all about teshuva. Um, you know, cleaning your slate, no matter how many times you fall, you say, I'm sorry, I don't want to do it again. And then you like, you know, try to, to work towards it. Learn Torah about this thing that you keep having a weakness for, um, whatever it is, because, you know, again, doing the teshuva all the time shows you how this is really not who you are. This person who keeps falling is not who you are. You're that part of you that really wants to grow. You're that part of you that really wants to excel and change and, and you know, get closer to Hashem. I'm not to chas v'shalom, keep falling, you know? So if you're honest with yourself and you're able to say teshuva every time you do something that's not good, um, you know, we're learning about a tzaddik, thought, speech, and actions. They never sin. So if you're sinning in any area, you know, thought, speech, and actions, then um, this is something to, to really say to Shiva for. Um, and, and again, with that honesty, you really see who you are. Um, so don't lose faith to see that you're always failing because <laughs> we're not, we're not, we're not tzaddikim, not yet at least. Um, so I just wanted to say that. Great opportunity. Um, 
yeah okay so let's get back into it i think here we're going to have a summary of what we've learned so far so i won't go into one for us such is the divine service of men of ascent it is wholly altruistic motivated only by a desire to please hashem and to make his presence felt everywhere that's what it means to be a tzaddik like of this highest level there's no evil inside of you there's no you know desire to to um seek pleasure in the world outside of you no desire to escape the moment no matter how hard it may be a tzaddik doesn't have any of this because he's so clear with the truth of the world that the truth is not the bad i'm seeing it's it's you know what's you know there's there's something much deeper it's the essence of what i'm what what i'm looking at you know which we can we can't see that the essence is hashem's presence and what we learned last time was the fact that this whole world um that represents the shrina which is a feminine aspect of god then there's a male aspect of god like the um and the the shrina is you know trapped in this world we can see what that means you know there's so many bad things happening in the world constantly we suffer people around us suffer there's someone suffering right now in the world somewhere um and so it's really not a pleasant place to be like this world is not great <laughs> um so it's not at the level of perfection which means that you know this holy holy um you know the mother our mother she's definitely not happy that we're suffering she's definitely not happy to be here in this low level um she wants to be up she wants to be up in the perfect realms with her husband she wants to be up there um and what we were learning is that a, a man of ascent b'nai aliyah oh, those who um have mercy on their mother they're not self-conscious they're god conscious they're conscious of the fact that in this moment that there is difficulty happening that there's a, a separation between god and himself you know between the higher between a kodesh baruch and and the shechina there's suffering happening of the mother and i really want her to stop suffering i really want her to to be happy and to be united with you know with herself with with her husband so how what does that man of ascent do his every second every moment of life thought speech and actions is all geared towards bringing this unity. So what does that mean? When we do mitzvot, when a man of ascent does mitzvot, this is his kavana. This is the level he's reaching in his mind. So spiritually, he's reaching this level. Um, and with all of his actions, with you know, he does all these mitzvot. And through that, he creates a unity. He brings down Hashem's, you know, highest, higher level um, to come down to the, the mother. Um, and there's that unity that happens through our actions and we say it every morning we say it every day you know um, so the whole purpose of everything we experience in this world is to bring that unity which doesn't happen without us we're very important so um you know if we it's a, it's it's about tapping into that level more and more and more at least having it in our mind that it exists and that's where i want to be and that's what i want to do um will really help you to get there um because of the brain you know situation that you're creating for yourself the connections and your pathways that you're building um <clears throat> and the spiritual behind it so when when we when a person of this caliber when he's doing mitzvot what actually happens is he's bringing the lower level right all the thought speech and actions that he's doing in this world are from the lower level and he's elevating it up up to the higher levels up to a kodesh baruch Hu. what happens there just like water evaporates and rises up to the sky then is clouds and then comes back down as rain and you know replenishes the the world again same thing with these mitzvot with these thought speech and actions of this lower world this person we're able to bring it up and um once it's up there it connects with the kodesh baruch Hu and it rains down blessings it rains down you know blessings come from a uh, yichud blessings come from the connection of um you know the the giver which is the male aspect in judaism because it comes from hashem like there's a male aspect of hashem who's a giver and then we have the mother the receiver shechina. 
So that's how it happens. We activate that. So a person who's who's you know really God conscious, this is what is is to be God conscious. It's not about what do I gain? It's about how can I help my mother in pain? You know, how can I get her out of this captivity? She doesn't want to be here. She's suffering, you know? Um, so the Alter Rebbe now goes on to explain that the two aforementioned interpretations of the term men of ascent accord with each other are, and are in fact complementary. It is a Kabbalistic axiom that the elevation of man, the initials of my nukfin, which is exactly what I was talking about. My nukfin is the feminine waters, um, which is the, the, the aspect of the lower world, right? The world that we live in, all the things that we do can, you know, comes from the lower waters. Um, it affects the corresponding descent of mud, um, which are the initials for Maim Dechurin, which is a masculine water. So the male, the male that gives to the female, the female that comes, you know, wanting to receive. So this means that the arousal of the feminine level, i.e. the recipient, which in our case means the efforts of man below with his actions, right? His actions powered by thought, speech, and, thought, and you know, thoughts <laughs> with the kavana. Um, but really in this world, it's all about actions. So, so from the effort of man below in his actions, which are directed upwards towards Hashem, not downwards towards another, not downwards towards myself, not downwards towards, um, you know, what am I getting out of this? You know, someone hurt me. I want to hurt them back. They're, I'm not being patient because they, they're making me, lose, you know, get frustrated. It's not, about, it's not about directing your feminine waters, the lower waters to the lower, right? Or chas v'shalom, you know, in actually acting out on those things, we learned that you actually bury yourself. You actually go lower than even the low level that you're on. So you wow. bury yourself deeper, right? We're directing upwards, 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 always. And so by directing upward toward Hashem, it causes a reciprocal arousal of the masculine level, which is the giver, meaning that in our case, Hashem's benevolence as it flows downwards and is bestowed upon man. So applying this to the service of men of ascent, we find the following. That aspect of their service mentioned in the first interpretation that they elevate evil and convert it to good constitutes an ascent of man, an ascent of the um, lower waters, the feminine waters, right? Because evil only, like evil exists in this lower realm. When you go high, 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 when you go to the highest of heights, you know, the end stuff, there's no evil. There's a purpose to evil. It's not, it's not an existence on its own. It's created by the creator who creates and created everything. So um, evil exists in this world. Um, so when, and we were saying that like, um, man, we're very important. This world is not great. We know it. Um, it actually can be pretty horrible. We know it. Um, the same way we can do and think and say horrible things. Don't run away from it. Acknowledge it. See it. You know, it's not the end of the world. It is the world. So what do we do? We recognize it, work to elevate it because only a human being can elevate anything um, properly. Um, it's our purpose in this world to elevate so when we elevate the evil with the purpose to convert it to good, we're seeing that it really, I'm returning it back to its true source of goodness. You know, I'm not seeing it as, it's, as it is on its own, chas v'shalom, like a vodazara, to believe that something exists separate to Hashem. No, I understand it comes from Hashem and I'm, true, you know, taking it back to its source in goodness, where there's only good. Um, and I convert it to good, it constitutes an ascent of man, an ascent of the lower waters, the Mayim Nukvin. The aspect mentioned in the second interpretation, which is the service, by the service of love, they draw down Hashem's presence upon earth, constitutes a descent of mud, a descent of the masculine waters, the Mayim Dukhurin. Um, so 
uh, where am I looking? <laughs> Draw, they, uh, for every mitzvah that they perform is a channel for the descent of Hashem's presence. This is so special um, because it's through our actions in this world that we bring more goodness. So if you're not happy with the way the world is, there's so many reasons to, to think that way, then do good, perform mitzvot, you know, bring goodness into the world, bring the showering, you know, come to Hashem saying, I understand, I know, and I really want to change it. I really want to bring you into this world. I know you want to, you know, a husband doesn't want to leave his wife. There's, there's a reason that there's a separation, whether mental, emotional, physical, spiritual, there's a reason and there's something blocking it. So what do we do? We say, you know, away with the blockages, I'm coming to you. Um, so thus the two interpretations are complementary since the ascent of man is the thing that causes the descent of mud. So those two um, explanations of who is a man of ascent is someone who, who both elevates the evil within them, turns it into good, and also brings down goodness into the world, onto the Shekhinah. So this is telling you they're not different. One affects the other. It's the same. So the Alter Rebbe employs Kabbalistic terms in his explanation, which are explained in Chassidot at length. They will become clearer in the course of further study. They'll become um, clearer in the further study. In the Alter Rebbe's words, both interpretations are complementary. So this is what we talked about now. The Rebbe is going to explain it in his words. Um, both interpretations are complementary for by refining the good that's found in Klippa Noga, as the men of ascent do by converting their animal soul, which is derived from Klippa Noga, to goodness. One elevates the feminine waters, the man. That's big. And remember, we, in one of our lessons, we were saying how... Um, what we want to do is to, to make our animal soul a dwelling place for Hashem. That's important. You want to make the evil that's within you a dwelling place for Hashem, recognizing it for what it is, that it's not evil. It's the, the, the clipper, right? So, so we can actually cause it to become higher than the level that it really is. And by doing everything we're learning about now, we're able to you know, make it a dwelling place for Hashem because Hashem can come down if we bring up, right, um, and invite him in. So, um, uh, so, yeah, so by converting their animal soul, which is derived from Kippur Naga to good, one elevates the feminine waters, which affects unions in the higher realm, so as to cause masculine waters to descend into this world. These masculine waters are the waters of kindness that flow into and are contained in each of the 248 positive mitzvot, which are all in the nature of kindness or benevolence and masculine waters. Wow. Um, this term masculine waters is applied to mitzvot means that the mitzvot draw God's holiness from above, i.e. from the higher realms downwards, so that God's holiness can be clothed in and revealed within the lowest realms, i.e. our physical world, as explained elsewhere. The explanation is that our world is the lowest world. Um, thus, the two interpretations of the term men of ascent are complementary. Wow. So, you know, when Miriam talks about Torah as feeding your soul, the only mitzvah that feeds your soul, and mitzvot that, you know, protect your, your protect you, and, um, you know, add to you, you know, really help you. This is kind of what she's, this is where, what is she saying that um, the 248 mitzvot, which are the positive mitzvot, which are mitzvot of doing, remember we were talking about before, the mitzvot of Lotase, uh, 365 mitzvot that Hashem gave us in the Torah. And those mitzvot correspond to our sinews, our veins, um, where blood, you know, circulates through to each organ. Um, and when we're refraining, anytime we use this energy of refraint, which is where these prohibitive commandments come from, the energy of refraint, um, refraint and restriction and limitation, where um, 
we're actually cleaning ourselves, purifying ourselves. So it's extremely powerful if when we're doing a mitzvah lot if we're refraining from doing something um, for the sake of kedusha, for the sake of unity, for the sake of bringing Hashem, you know, down into this world. Um, it's so helpful to think wherever this mitzvah corresponds in my body, I'm purifying it. I'm purifying this place, purging it out of all impurity. Super important. So that we talked about in another lesson. Now we're talking about the 248 positive mitzvot, which again, the positive and negative mitzvot all come together to make 613. So we have 248 positive mitzvot, which corresponds to within our body, um, the organs. Um, not the blood flow, not the sinews, but the organs, which where the blood goes into and provides sustenance for. So these mitzvot are kindness in nature, whereas the um, restrictive mitzvot are, are restrictive. They're, you know, um, what was the word I used today? Like dinim. Um, I forgot. <laughs> Rigorous. Um, so you know, limitation, restriction, holding back, pulling yourself back, um, gavura, right? Here, the positive mitzvot are chesed, chesedik in nature. These are, you know, correspond to our, our organs. Um, and we're learning that it, it is the masculine waters. Oh, wow, that's interesting. So there's a connection. When a person, um, when a person's, uh, I want to say gateways, but like circulatory system is blocked up. You know, we talk about blood cholesterol, um, which, you know, causes many issues um, that take time to progress and become bigger and bigger and bigger. If we're not actively working to recognize it and, you know, work it away, get rid of it, then it's just going to build up more and more and cause some big you know, sort of explosion or you know, something that we really can't, can't avoid, you know, chas v'shalom with a heart attack, you know, it didn't just happen. There were steps leading to it that we didn't take seriously, right? Um, like if I'm acting as a Russia, you know, every time I, I do this thing where I'm weak, I have a weakness for, and I keep doing it, you know, eventually we can see from our own experience, it leads to a big dramatic scene whether physically in our body or emotionally with other people, physically with our um, life with other people or just emotionally, we can't cope with any, whatever, right? It's all connected. So um, one thing will have effects in every other area of our life anyway. But um, the idea is it didn't just start there. You know, Hashem created us in a very beautiful way and he gave us mitzvot to, to keep, to guard ourselves to keep us on the righteous path, the path of life, which Hashem says is the path of life. The path of death is the opposite and it is your choice. You know, if you're not looking, if you're not saying to Shuva each time you fall, if you're not, um, you know, physically, when you slip up with eating too much food, emotionally, when you slip up with losing emotional control of yourself, that you're being impatient or thinking mean things, you know? These are places where you say to Shiva for because it's not okay, it's not cool, it's a sin. Um, and by doing that, you purify yourself, you clean yourself off so that you're looking at the, the you know, blockages that are building and you're getting rid of it each time again and again. So that, yeah, okay, you might sin again, but it's not going to be, it's not going to end up with that massive blowover, right? Um, that's amazing. So the, the big connection between our body and the Torah. Um, so what I wanted to say is that the, so the courage that brings physical and spiritual sustenance is um, the 613, you know, refraining mitzvah, whenever we refrain. Um, and that corresponds to the masculine waters which is the ones that come down, but it's the feminine waters. Oh, other way around. And that's the, the, that's the, the waters, the feminine waters, right? Because when we're doing our part in this world, when we're keeping it clear, we're constantly working on ourselves, then we're allowing the energy to flow through the spirituality to, 
to, to sustain us, uh, physicality to sustain us, right? And um, then we can receive from the masculine orders, which comes from with the kindness, it comes with the positive mitzvah, the actions of doing good. Um, there's, there's a big connection. Um, so, so I paused it. I'm just going to head off to say Spirit HaOmer with my husband uh, back in.
Okay. Uh. So that's the end of chapter 10. Um, what we're talking about the Tzadi. Uh, and while we're at the end, I just want to reiterate the fact that we're learning about the tzaddik is because having it in mind, having whatever thoughts we have in our mind, we learn creates the emotions, which creates the um, actions, right? So if we're thinking all the time, how bad am I, da 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 or how good does that seem, living a life of gashmi, living a life that's all for the sake of this moment and, you know, pleasure for the moment, then... Um, that's where I'm going to take myself. And that keeps going lower and lower and lower. There's like, you know, you could just keep going lower and bury yourself more and more. Whereas we're looking at the tzaddik, what is this level that we want to achieve? We're not there yet, but this is what I want to have my mind occupied with. So Miriam talks about having um, benoni moments or tzaddik-like moments. So it's when I'm thinking in my head, okay, this is a, a situation I'm dealing with right now whether it's a normal, you know, nothing really, or super intense, or, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, whatever it is, I can choose whatever moments in my day. Um, and I can say, I want to choose to have a static like moment, just for two, two minutes, just for two minutes, I don't have to commit to it for a whole year, I don't have to commit for it for a whole day or an hour, just two minutes, you know, and then the next day, maybe I want to try, you know, three minutes, you know, maybe next week, I'll, I'm going to try six minutes, you know, so it's this idea of, of knowing where I want to go. Um, and, and doing that, the Alter Rebbe says is how you achieve a higher level. So when you have it in your mind, um, and doing this, you're actually able to, to meditate on it. And we've talked about the fact the key of meditation belongs in that. So when you're meditating, you're able to bring the thoughts in your mind, to and the intellectual understanding to to your heart and change your heart which is where your animal soul resides so you're able to start a process of change um and to do what the Bain only what the bene aliyah do which is they take the the evil and they turn it into good make um a dwelling place for hashem within the the um animal soul think we'll um, I'm not sure if I should continue or if I should just do the meditation here what do you guys think I came late to walk up for meditation <laughs> That's it. Did you say you're happy to go on for a meditation or to continue learning? Yes, I'm happy with the meditation because I missed part of the class. I don't know how many other people are on, but I'm happy to, to move on. I'll listen to the class that I missed after. Although I heard this sound <laughs> beautiful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Any other ideas? Agree, disagree? Um, meditation? All right, so next week we'll start off with chapter 11. Okay, so I'll invite everybody to take a breath, breathing out, allowing all the tension of the day, all the tension in your body, in your mind, in your heart to just melt away and be invited to exit and pass through. So I'm breathing in this beautiful Kudusha, this holy image of Hashem, of the masculine waters showering down into us. Breathing out recognizing all the tension and finding what's behind it, the Kripat Noga.
you know, this desire to bring up to heaven, to Hashem, for this experience of unication, unification, the Yichud of Hashem within you. Wow, what a powerful experience. So imagine all the negativities, whatever difficulties you've been facing from your loss of self-control, whatever areas they may be. A situation where you felt this week that you wish you could have dealt with better. And with this accepting understanding energy see this see your actions see the thoughts that led there see the feelings what your body was experiencing maybe heart palpitations a rush maybe hot inflamed maybe you felt frozen Whatever your body was feeling, just give it the space to recognize and resonate with that. The fear, whatever emotions were tied with it, maybe fear and confusion. Maybe it was low self-esteem. Maybe it was frustration. Anger. Resentment. Maybe it was lustful. Wanting. Yearning for something. Maybe it was simply a sadness, an overwhelming, unexplainable sadness, a foggy depression. Perhaps it was boastfulness mixed in in the situation that you were experiencing. Arrogance, haughtiness, pride. So just allow yourself to sit with those emotions from your heart that were happening at this time, sometime this week, maybe today. Allow yourself to resonate with your body in whatever it was feeling. And now let's take it to your mind. Allow yourself to resonate with what thoughts may have been driving it? What deep-seated beliefs had been nudging you? Probably for a long while before it came present physically in this situation. So let's just give ourselves a moment to invite our mind to resonate. If it doesn't happen, that's fine all good. Maybe I'm not worthy, not good enough. Maybe there are others who are better. Maybe I am deserving and they are not good enough.
maybe I'm not safe in this moment. So with all of this resonating in your mind, in your heart, in your body. Give yourself this acceptance and love unconditionally. I'm only human. I'm not yet a tzaddik. I have where I can work. I have what to purify. I have more goodness to give. With this lighter energy filling through you, through your mind, physical brain structure, you've got your neurons bubbling away. Sending messages through your body, to your heart. With this incredible power that Hashem gave us to not be a victim, to be a creator, a co-creator. To build ourselves up, to elevate ourselves no matter how low we may be in thought, speech, or action. Now acknowledge only your part where I could have done better, what I'm not happy with in my thoughts, in my speech, in my actions, and do to show for that, whatever it was. Hashem, I'm sorry that I thought that way about a fellow. I'm sorry I thought that way about myself. Sorry I spoke Lashon Hara about myself or about others. Something that I have a weakness for that I have to work on. I'm not happy I fell to that action, whatever that action was. not how I want to be. I have a weakness there. And for this moment, for now, I take full responsibility over all of my thoughts, all of my speech, and all of my actions from that moment. And for any, anything I'm experiencing now, up until now, Please help me not to do it again. Please help me to recognize the good, the part of my soul that's within it, within that experience. And to channel it, elevate it for good rather than a lower expression. Whether it's the sadness of the earth element, the lustfulness of the water element, the boastfulness of the air or the anger and restriction of the fire. Help me to recognize my soul and get to that higher level 
So now with an image of yourself, an image before you of a tzaddik, allow yourself to mimic the way this tzaddik would act, what this tzaddik is thinking, how his body feels free, completely unrestricted, untied to the judgment of the world. And see yourself having a tzaddik like moment with the joy, with the laughter, the lightness, with the desire to bring your mother out of captivity, to bring unity to Hakarish Baruch Hu and the Shekhinah. And see the effect on yourself, on the people around you, like this positive energy all this mayim coming down these waters, showering down blessings because of this yichud connection of mother and father. And see the good effects, the smiles that's taking over the people in your life, the people in this situation. The heavy energy is gone. There's a lightness, there's a connection to something greater. And there's a shoveling out, a redeeming rather than burying of all of us involved. So with this beautiful image, may we pray to Hashem that the thoughts in our mind get engraved into the grooves in our mind and imprint onto our animal soul in our heart to transform this animal soul, these negative drives to the positive ones, to holy ones, to the higher level, like a tzaddik. May Hashem help us all with extra koach, with extra strength to get through these spirit Omer days. But we see it always as an opportunity to grow, to elevate. Okay. For the video, is there anyone who would like to share some comments or questions that you think people on the internet might be interested to hear? And then we'll then we'll stop sharing and then do it just for us. No? Okay. Thanks for joining. There we go. Um, am I still recording? Stop.